In today's video, we're going to take a Tesla Model S and try to charge a small solar power system because the battery in this thing is massive and if you have a California blackout and you have a Tesla Model S, and I know a lot of people watching this do not have Teslas, but we are converting to electric cars and as oil prices increase, whether you love oil or hate oil, you, we will run out. So we need to start learning how to use these electric cars in our daily life. And this large battery inside of this car can be used for other purposes. And if you have a blackout and you want to power your fridge, if we can access the power in this battery, we can power our fridge or other small appliances in a long-term blackout. I mean, you could even drive down to a supercharger, charge up your car, bring it back home, and then use that power to power your house. So let's say the grid is down in one side, you could drive to a supercharger in the city next to you, charge up, bring that power back home, and then extract it and charge other batteries with it. And this thing has a 60 kilowatt hour battery, and it's the smallest battery, but it's a lot of power. I mean, you can power a whole house for a whole day, like a massive six bedroom house with a full family inside. That would take around 45 to 60 kilowatt hours. So if you have a larger Tesla, considering the losses that you're gonna have from taking power from the DC to DC converter and all the losses from charging, you're gonna have a lot of power regardless. I mean, even a couple kilowatt hours could run your fridge for a couple days. So that's what we're gonna do. And a lot of people when trying to do this, try to use the 12 volt cigarette lighter receptacle. And that is pretty illogical because it's only 120 watts. And over the course of 24 hours, that's like a little over two kilowatt hours of power. But that is good, but it's not that great. And what I wanna do in this video is access the 12 volt system directly because the battery, the 12 volt battery is charged with a large 200 amp DC to DC converter. So if we can access that, we can push some serious power out of this battery. So let's compare that for a second. If we use a cigarette lighter adapter, that's 10 amps. If we can access the 12 volt sealed lead acid battery in the front under the hood, that's 200 amps. So that means we could charge up a Goal Zero, we could charge up a Max Oak Blue Eddy, we could charge up a lithium iron phosphate battery bank with a DC to DC charger. We could do everything with that thing. And it seems pretty straightforward. The Tesla Model S will compensate for any loads that are given on the battery, but we're gonna put a current meter on it and see how well it works once we start extracting power from the 12 volt system. And I think the only way to find out is to hook up a system directly to 12 volt battery and see how well it works. So yeah, let's do it. So this is an older Tesla and I can't find the battery. So I did find the battery, but man, it is tucked up under there. With the Model 3, it's right here. And with the newer Teslas, it's in the front. But man, this thing is tucked up under there. I mean, how the heck do you take it out? So after watching YouTube videos, I figured out that there's some jump start terminals on the front of the Tesla so I can access the 12 volt battery because this is way too difficult. If you have a new Model 3, I guess it's a lot easier, but for me, I can't do it. So we're gonna access the jump start terminals instead. We have a body panel removal tool. So we have a positive and then we have a negative all the way over here. We have 12.3 volts. That's not that great considering it's a sealed lead acid. This battery might not be that good. So now the real test is when we put a load on this inverter, how the Tesla Model S will compensate and how fast it will charge. I'm going to keep an eye on the voltage to make sure that it doesn't go below 12 volts so I do not hurt the Tesla Model S's battery. And in theory, it should be able to handle like 200 amps, but I'm not sure how the charge circuitry works. So we're just gonna add a load and see what happens to the voltage. And what's cool is we have a Hall effect sensor. So right now we're pulling 2.5 amps, and this is the standby consumption of this inverter. And we're at 12.2 volts, so it hasn't compensated yet. The Tesla Model S has not started charging yet. So I just unlocked the car and it boosted the voltage to 12.7. 12.8. So check it out, we have 12.8 volts and we're pulling 45, 46 amps. So this is some serious power from this Tesla 12 volt system. But yeah, right now we are powering a heat gun and it's super hot, it's warming me up right now. So right now we're pushing 57 amps and now we're gonna crank it up. We're at 12.4 volts and we're pushing 73 amps. Now we're at 12.1 volts and we're pushing 91. Aw, oh, dang it. 
So I just realized that the wire that supplies this terminal stud, look at this, this is like 12, maybe 10 gauge wire. So there's no way I can use this to extract power from the Tesla, there's no way. After searching online, I figured out there's a 50 amp fuse at the battery that supplies those terminals and I blew it. And so because it has a 50 amp fuse, the max that you should pull from those terminals is 40 amps to be on the safe side so that you're doing the standard 125% rating for OCPD. But here's the battery, it's right underneath the air intake box. So after checking all of the fuses, none of these 50 amp fuses blew. So what we need to do is check on the fuse box which one blew over here. I didn't see any, so I'm kind of lost as to where they have that fuse because everything on the top of this battery looks perfect. There's nothing that blew. So after thinking about it for a day and realizing that the wire gauge is too small on those jump start terminals and I don't want to take off that fender cover every single time I want to use that power, I'm just going to wire up a 12 gauge to XT60 connector and this can pass 25 amps and throughout the day at 12 volts that's I think around 5 kilowatt hours and in a backup situation pulling 5 kilowatt hours from my battery pack is plenty um, especially if I have a large battery bank and I just want to trickle charge it. So yeah, we have XT60 connector, marine grade heat shrink, automotive um, primary hookup wire that's oil resistant and waterproof and all that good stuff. And then we have a 30 amp fuse and this is actually rated for 30 amps, the fuse holder, because a lot of them online are super cheap and you don't want to use them for 30 amps, they'll melt. This one doesn't melt, I've tested this one. So yeah, we're going to hook this up directly to the Tesla's battery. And another benefit of the XT60 in this situation is I'll be able to use one of these watt meters with XT60 connectors. So we can see the voltage and make sure that it doesn't drop too low and we can calculate the kilowatt hours that I push through it. So yeah, we can finally actually test what we're doing. See the yellow line on the 50 amp fuse? I am tapping into that with a 30 amp fuse. So that means my fuse will blow before that fuse will. And then on the main negative, I have my wire connected. So I'm tapping into the 12 volt battery, but you do not want to mess with anything and you don't want to disconnect anything. So be very careful if you're trying to do this. So now I hooked up my meter and we've got 12.6 volts. So now we can safely connect some appliances and see how well it works. And now I connected a modified sine wave inverter to charge up this 1500 watt hour battery. And this will only use, I think 170 watts. So it will be safe to use with our 30 amp fused circuit. So the voltage was dropping, but it just compensated and turned on the battery charger. So now I can safely do it. So when I first connected it, it kept lowering down until it hit 12.2 volts. And then the Tesla's 12 volt battery charger kicked on and it is now compensating for the load. It is staying above 14 volts and we're only drawing 15 amps to power this 100 and 67 watt load and we're going to actually measure it over time and see how many watt hours we've already done 14 watt hours and we're pulling 15 amps continuously technically you can pull a lot more power from this system but i don't know of a safe way to wire it and i do not want to disconnect any of the other circuits because i hear you can hurt the tesla so right now we're charging up this one but i also want to charge the goal zero at the same time this one uses 160 to 170 watts and this one uses 80 watts with the AC adapter. So we're gonna plug it in and it should not exceed the max amp for the circuit. So let's see what happens. All right, we're pulling 300 watts from it. And the voltage is stabilized. We're still at 14 volts. So we're pulling between 20 and 23 amps and we're charging the goal zero and this 1500 watt hour battery pack. That is so cool, you guys. We can actually charge up solar power system batteries. I can run fridges off of this goal zero and charge it with my Tesla. Like, it actually works. How amazing. And already it says that we've pulled almost 100 watt hours. So yeah, I wanna try to hit a kilowatt hour and then I know that it actually works. And I'm not touching the Tesla. I have not touched anything. It compensates on its own. When the voltage goes too low on the battery, it will crank that voltage up and start charging it. So yeah, it does work. Quick update, it is still charging the heck out of these batteries and we are still at 13.9 to 14 volts. So we could actually add more to the system, but I'm just scared and I don't wanna mess with my Tesla. So you could technically pull like 50 amps 
from a comparable circuit, maybe pulling from two of the leads, you could even do 100 amps, but I'm gonna stay on the safe side and stick with this because I can charge two of these batteries and this is plenty for backup power. So yeah, I'm stoked. So now let's talk about how to charge a stationary solar power system battery bank with your Tesla. Because if you can do that and you have one at home, you can drive the Tesla down to the supercharger station, charge it up as much as you want, and then bring it back home and then charge up your solar power system batteries. And if you have a truly off-grid system, this would be perfect. And what you will need is a DC to DC battery charger. This is a 40 amp one. And with the OCPD that you have on the battery, you would actually, you would also have to over gauge the wires as well, but you could push 40 amps out of this system, no problem. So 40 amps at 12 volts is a lot of power to continuously charge your solar power system battery bank. You could have this Tesla parked in your garage and you could have a battery bank on the side and just charge it when you get home if you want, if you have like unlimited supercharging or something. The only problem is that a lot of stationary batteries are not 12 volts and this only works with 12 volts. So you're gonna have to get like a Sterling 12 to 24 or you need to get um, a boost converter and change the output to the absorption of your solar power system battery bank. And that's pretty much it. It's just a couple of wires. This one's a pain in the butt because it's, it's not voltage sensitive like the Victron and the Sterling. So you have to wire up your own ignition circuit to D positive, but you could easily make a charger system out of this that connects. So all you'd have to do is a wire from D positive to the positive of the input and then the output just goes to your battery bank for your solar power system. So this is a great way to do it. I like these because they're so cheap, but a lot of people hate wiring up the ignition circuit if they've never done that before. But this has all the features you need. It charges lithium iron phosphate. It does everything, but I've noticed a lot of bad reviews lately because people don't understand how to wire up an ignition circuit. Also, if you reverse polarity, these things will be done and you can't mess it up. You have to know what you're doing. You also have to gauge the wires properly. But yeah, this is a great option for connecting your Tesla to your home solar power system battery bank and you'd be set. Also think about with converter circuits, the input to the output, the difference in voltage will determine the efficiency. So if you're just boosting, you know, 12 volts to like 14 volts, you're gonna get like 97% efficiency. If you're going from 12 volts to 24 volts, it's gonna drop. I think it's like 92% efficiency. And then when you go from 12 all the way up to 48, it really depends on what type of circuit, what size and what you're pushing and how much heat is being dissipated, but the efficiency will drop substantially. So if you wanna do this for a long term, um, you need to think about that and size everything in the system accordingly. But yeah, it's so easy. You just connect the input and the ignition circuit to the Tesla. You can charge whatever solar power system battery bank you want. But yeah, I'm sure some people are gonna complain about the inverter to converter setup. And then you have the charge circuitry on here. So there's lots of losses. There is lots of losses. Like if you think about all the losses in these charging systems and converter and inverter circuits, you're looking at like 70% efficiency. I didn't do the math, but that's what I imagine. All right guys, I'm getting bored out of my mind and we're about to hit 500 watt hours. So we're just gonna cut the test there because it works. All right, it works perfectly fine. It can handle a lot more. I mean, we can easily push 50 amps continuously. As long as you wire it up correctly, it will compensate for the load. And look at 13.95, 13.97. It keeps the voltage where it needs to be. It's a really cool little circuit on here for charging the battery. Guys, here's the money shot. 299 watts, 13.8 volts, and wait for it, 486 watt hours. So that's good enough. I'm gonna turn it off now. Now the real question is, should I keep this hooked up? I don't really need to use it. I have so much solar power in here, there's no way I need to use this. But now that I know how to do it, I'm gonna have this in my garage if I ever need a backup power source. And I've got so many batteries in this house, I'll be able to charge all of them with this. So I'm just gonna disconnect it and know that I can do it. And it's awesome and easy. And you can do this with parts from any automotive store. So this is easy. And if I was really desperate, I would just use some big cable clamps on there and push some serious amps. And just watch the voltage and I'm set. So yeah, I'm gonna take it apart. So yeah, the Tesla still works. So let me know if you guys have any more questions or something else you want me to test, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.